Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. We're going to talk about change of basis. Now, this is a very crucial idea and often confused idea about what this means. What is this change of basis? When you have a linear transformation, so far we've always been talking about using the canonical basis for representing it. What if I were to use some other basis? What happens to the matrix? That is the question that we're going to answer. Okay. So, first of all, let's talk about coordinates of a vector with respect to different bases. We have seen this already before. I just want to recap this. Let's say you have a vector v which is x, y in the canonical basis. So we write this as v equals x e1 plus y e2, right? And we denote this on the plot as a vector v here which has got a x coordinate x and a y coordinate y. Okay. So now suppose I have another basis u1, u2. Okay. And u1 let's say is ab and u2 is cd and ad is not equal to bc. So these two are linearly independent. They cannot be uh, there cannot be a basis otherwise, right? So u1 is ab and u2 is cd. Okay. Now I know that u1 is simply ae1 plus be2 and u2 is ce1 plus be2. I have written u1, u2 in terms of the canonical basis in this fashion. Okay. Okay. So now the same vector v may be some other x prime y prime when expressed in the basis u1, u2, right? So how do you do that? So you take a line along u2, you have a vector here and along u1, you have a vector here. These two, if you add by parallelogram law, you should get v. Okay. So this is how you write v as a linear combination of scale, a linear combination of u2 and u1, right? You scale it appropriately and add and you get this. So that what you scale by can be some other x prime y prime, right? So this v, same vector v when written in terms of u1, u2 will be some other x prime u1 plus y prime u2. What is the connection between x prime, y prime and x, y? Okay, so this is a change of vector for change of basis for just a vector, okay, vector's coordinate. What is the connection between x prime, y prime and x, y? Okay, so this x prime, y prime can be somewhere else here, right? Some other point x prime, y prime. So you had an x, y here, then you went to some other x prime, y prime. Okay, so how do you go from x prime, y prime to x, y? That's very easy. Okay, how do you do it? You simply use u1 as a e1 plus b e2 and u2 as c e1 plus b e2. If you just plug that in, you will get this expression. Okay, so let me show that to you. Okay, so you've got this v being x prime u1 plus y prime u2. And then u1 is a e1 plus b e2. u2 is c e1 plus b e2. Okay, it's just a question of substituting this back here. So you get x prime a e1 plus x prime b e2 plus y prime c e1 plus y prime b e2. Okay. So if you were to write this, you get that this is nothing but the coordinate a x prime plus c y prime, b x prime plus b y prime. Okay. And this is the same as a c b d multiplying the matrix x prime. Okay. So you get here very easily that if you want to go from x prime y prime to x y, it's very easy, right? x y is just a b c d multiplied by x prime y prime. So it's easy to see. You can think about it in so many ways, but this is very good. This is nothing but a linear transformation d. Okay, when you change basis, what happens to the coordinates of a vector, the same vector b, okay, but different with respect when you change basis, you actually get a linear transformation. What about going from x, y to x prime, y prime? You can just invert this, right? A, D is not equal to B, C. I can invert this. So I'll get x prime, y prime is A, B, C, D inverse times x, y. Okay, so this is the power of inverse and all that, okay? So if you went from x prime, y prime to x, y with one transformation, the opposite is just the inverse, isn't it? So you get A, B, C, D inverse. A lot of people will write this and they'll think of this going to this side as the inverse. So this is the algebra of using matrices, okay? So you can use with matrices, you can treat them like numbers, move them around here, there in an equation. So when you have A equals B, C, you, when you want to bring B to this side, you write B inverse A equals C, right? So same thing you can do here. This is the algebra of matrices. When you multiply them out, you can do inverse and bring this to this side. So that's what I've done. Here. And this I know already, I have a formula, 1 by A, D minus B, C, D minus C minus B, A, X, Y. So this is T inverse. So this is the linear transformation, this is the inverse of the linear transformation. So when you change the same vector, so the vector is not changed, same vector, if you change the coordinates with, from canonical to something else, right, you're doing some sort of a linear transformation and it works in this fashion. Okay, so there's the connection between change of basis 
and linear transformations. Okay, easy enough. Now we'll ask this slightly more complicated question of matrix of a linear transformation and basis. So far, we've always been writing basis of a linear matrix of a linear transformation with respect to canonical basis. Okay, everything is canonical basis. Now here I'm going to change that. I'm going to say I want to think of a matrix for the linear transformation T, but with some arbitrary input basis U1, U2 and an arbitrary output basis v1 v2 okay what does that mean so u1 u2 is a basis v1 v2 is a basis any input i have i'm going to write as a linear combination of u1 u2 so i'm interested in finding out what t of u1 is now t of u1 will be some vector and i will write that as a linear combination of v1 v2 instead of writing u1 e2 so instead of having u1 e2 here u1 e2 here dealing only with canonical basis I'm going to have a different basis here, different basis here. Okay. And then let's say T of U1 is some AV1 plus BV2. T of U2 is some CV1 plus DV2. And then I have a matrix M of T, which is ABCD. But now my input basis is U1, U2 and output basis is V1, V2. So this ABCD is not with respect to canonical basis, canonical basis. It's with respect to an input basis U1, U2 and output basis V1, V2. Okay. So what happens? through this linear transformation, here is the way to picture it. Suppose I have an arbitrary u, which is written in terms of the basis u1, u2, x u1 plus y u2, okay? It will go through the linear transformation, I will get an v. What is this v? This v is written as x prime u1 plus y prime u2. Okay, so how do I, how do I operate this linear transformation now? Any un, input u, I have to first express it as a linear combination of u1, u2, okay? So any input u can be written as x u1 plus y u2. Notice that, notice how this x y is now coordinates of u with respect to this new basis, different basis, not canonical, okay, general basis. Okay. Now under this linear transformation, maybe it went to some v. And this v now I will express as a linear combination of v1, v2, Not may not be canonical here also, output basis can be something else. So this v becomes x prime v1 plus y prime v2. Now all this is possible, right? Now how are x y and x prime v prime related now? They are related through this matrix that I have here. So coordinates of V with respect to this basis V1, V2 is X prime, Y prime, A, B, C, D, X, Y. This matrix A, B now plays this more general role of relating the coordinates with respect to two different bases. Now, you might wonder what is the point? Canonical basis is good enough. Why do I need another basis? Okay. So you will see there is a there is a very, uh, very, very good reason for why you might be interested in other bases. We will see it in subsequent lectures. But for now, let's first understand how to deal with a more general basis with respect to linear transformation. Okay, so here is change of basis for a matrix. So now, uh, so you know, this matrix is from this basis to this basis. How is it connected to the canonical basis matrix? Now, the same transformation T will also have another matrix when I change this basis. Now, supposing I make the input basis canonical, output basis canonical, I will get another thing here. How is this matrix connected to the other matrix okay so that's the question we're going to ask you okay so let's uh, write it down very clearly okay so suppose t is a linear transformation and i have when i have input basis canonical y output basis canonical i have a matrix m of t which is a11 a12 a21 a22 this is with respect to both being canonical okay so x prime y prime i know is m of t into x prime. this is how i write for input to output now if i change my input basis to some u1 u2 which is u1, 1, u2, 1, u1, 2, u2, 2, 2. Okay. So notice these two have to be linearly independent, right? So they have to, they have to be, they have to satisfy some relationship. I mean, they should not be linearly dependent on each other. I, I move to some arbitrary input basis and I move to another arbitrary output basis, v1, v2. Okay. v1, 1, v2, 1, v1, 2, v2, 2. What will be this m tilde of t for the same transformation? What will be the matrix with respect to this input basis and all that output basis? That is my question. And how is it related to this M of T? Okay. Right? Interesting question, isn't it? So how do you solve this one? Like I said, I mean, hold on for a little while. If you understand this, there's lots of benefits coming in the future. Why, how, why would you like to change basis? That's an interesting question we'll ask later. Okay. So let's try and answer this question. Any U can be now written in terms of instead of x, y in the canonical basis, the same u here can be written in terms of u1, u2. You would have the coordinates x tilde u1 plus y tilde u2. Okay. And we know from our prior uh, thing of change of basis that this x tilde y tilde to x, y 
is actually a linear transformation, right? So you know that x tilde y tilde, if you multiply by this matrix, you will get x y. Okay. Same thing I can do on this side. This v that I got from the in the canonical basis, this vector v can be written as coordinates in v1, v2 also. You will get x tilde prime, y tilde prime. So x prime, y prime and canonical becomes x tilde prime, y tilde prime. And we know also that this x tilde prime, y tilde prime and x prime, y prime have this relationship. Okay. I've written it the other way around. I mean, if, if you have written it as in terms of the inverse as opposed to this way. Okay. There's a good reason why I want to do this. Now, how do I think of this m tilde of t? Okay. So, I know that uh, you know if, if it's in the canonical basis then i know x y bits multiplied by m of t to get x prime y prime what should i multiply x tilde y tilde to get x tilde prime y tilde prime so when i have x tilde y tilde i will first convert to x y multiply by m of t i get x prime y prime and then i will convert to x tilde prime y tilde prime to get the answer okay so that's how you get the matrix okay so you notice what's happening here so this m tilde of t is first it is m of t multiplied by two matrices on two sides. On one side, you have u11, u12, u21, u22. The other side, you have this inverse. Now, notice what happens here. This is very important. Supposing I take this matrix and multiply on the right with x tilde y tilde. Okay, right? x tilde y tilde is the, the coordinates for u in this input basis, right? So, then the, this is the basis in which I am working for m tilde. I'm m tilde of t, I am claiming is equal to this. So, m tilde of t multiplied by x tilde y tilde better give me x tilde prime y tilde prime. Is that true here? Let's check that. If you take this matrix and multiply by x tilde y tilde, if I multiply by u, I am going to get x y. Right? So, this matrix multiplication will give me x y. Now, this x y when multiplied by m of t will give me x prime y prime. Do you see that? Do you see how all these equations are working together? This x tilde y tilde when multiplied by this u matrix will give me x y. Now, this m of t when multiplying x y on the right will give me x prime y prime. Now, this x prime y prime when multiplying this v inverse matrix on the left, you will get x tilde prime y tilde. So, this multiplication of three matrices actually plays the role of this m tilde of t. It takes x tilde y tilde to x tilde prime y tilde prime. And that is what is called changing basis for a matrix. Okay. So, if you want to change from canonical to an arbitrary input basis, this is what you have to do. You have to take the original m of t, multiply by a 2 by 2 matrix on the right hand side, multiply by the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix on the left hand side, and you have your answer. Okay. Now, you may also ask the opposite. Okay. Some suppose I have my m tilde of t, how do I go to m of t? Okay. This is very, very easy. So you can go through the same thing, it will happen the other way around. In fact, you can do algebra here, right? How do I do algebra here? I know m tilde of t, let me write that down for you here. Let me show you this algebra, how that works. I know this m tilde of t is this v matrix inverse times m of t times the u matrix. Remember, what is this v matrix? v matrix is v, da, 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 v, da, da, v, da, da, v, da, da. I'm being lazy here. And this u matrix is u, da, 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 u, da, 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 u, da, da, da. You know what the da, da, da is, right? 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, like that. Okay. So now what is my algebra here? See, I have V inverse here. So I can bring it to this side, but I have to keep it on the left, right? I have to multiply both sides by V. If I multiply both sides by V, what will happen? V, V, if I put here, this V times V inverse will become identity for me. So identity I can drop, no? I don't have to bother. So I have V times M tilde of T equals M of T times U. Now what will I do? I'll multiply by U inverse on both sides. So how do I get rid of this U? Multiply by U inverse. Maybe I should put the equal to here, U inverse. And then this u and u inverse will cancel and you get here m of t equals v m tilde of t u inverse. So, notice how this kind of algebra works with matrices when you have invertible matrices and all that. So, this is what is happening here. So, I took this. I wrote m tilde of t is equal to this. So, I move this around. I get my next picture here. Okay. So, I got m tilde of t times v on the left and u inverse on the right. So, that's m of t. This is how you go between matrices when you do change of basis. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, I'm uh, not sure if there is uh, much benefit in doing this in detail, but practice is very, very good for practice. Maybe the instructors will record some videos to solve this uh, problem for you. You can take a matrix here and you can make this change from canonical to 1101 and assume this matrix is actually in this basis and you change back to canonical. Okay, so both of these you can try.
and uh, so so now notice what happens I, i've put only one basis right so what does that mean if any one basis is given you can assume input and output at the same basis so if we say to this there's only one basis no when when you go from canonical to this uh, these two is just one basis so v becomes equal to u okay both of them are equal and you have to just do the inverse and get to the answer okay uh, hope this is interesting Uh, this concludes our study of uh, linear transformations, range space, linear algebraic properties, and inverses and change of basis, and all that. Uh, thank you very much.